Hi, folks. This is Foss here from the ChrisFossShow.com. The ChrisFossShow.com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for being here. Go to Goodreads.com for chess Chris Foss. Hit that bell notification button for all the wonderful things that are going on over there at Goodreads uh, and YouTube as well on the YouTube.com for chess Chris Foss. Go to all of our groups on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, all that wonderful jazz that's out there and all that good stuff. Uh, today we have an amazing uh, lady on the uh, on the uh, podcast here. I'm trying to. What am I on a podcast? What am I on <laughs> on this podcast? And she's gonna be talking about uh, some of her amazing stuff. Her name is Od- Odile Faludi, and she has worked for nonprofit, not for profit real estate and the management consulting space for the last 15 years. She has a proven track record of opening doors of C-level suite executives uh, and in the top 200 companies in Australia. She walks the talk and knows better than anyone else about how to teach others her cold calling success formula. She is trained in crucial conversations through Vital Smarts, and they've helped over 300 of the Fortune 500 companies release significant results in using a proven method for driving rapid, sustainable, and measurable uh, change in behaviors. With her fearless but friendly approach, she successfully facilitated a small team of management consultants and see experts to secure a $2.2 million plus deal. It was with a large Australian financial organization. Her entry point was a cold call. Wow. And uh, she's repeated the success for other clients, showing how effective conversations can make your business uh, and keep the doors open. Welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you so much. It's it's great. It's early here, and it's uh, wonderful to start the day with you, Chris. There you go. It's wonderful to have you on the show, and uh, we're honored to have you. One of the, you know, you guys are over there uh, starting your guys' summer, aren't you? Yes, it's summer. Yeah, yeah we're going into winter. We'll in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah. So you, you, uh, you guys. I should really move to like Australia during the winter time here, and then during the summertime move, move, you know, back and forth. So I can always be in summer. That's what I need to do. That's it. So there you go. Uh, so uh, give us uh, your links where people can find you on the interwebs. Where you want people to see you on the interwebs and find out more about you. It's really just my name everywhere. Odile, O-D-I-L-E, Faludi, F-A-L-U-D-I. So that's F for Fred, A-L-U-D-I. Just Google my name. You'll find me on LinkedIn. I'm on YouTube. I have my own website. And uh, I'd I'd love you to reach out to me and see if I can help you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so uh, let's get a rundown on your services and what you do. um, cold calling, of course, is very hard to do. A lot of people don't like to do it. It's the hardest thing to learn when you learn sales. Uh, some people are scared of it. Uh, give us some, uh, you know, some of your thoughts on, uh, cold calling and how to overcome it and do well with it. Well, anyone who's ever worked with me and I've actually worked with thousands of people from rookies to managing directors. It's the words cold calling <laughs> that is playing on your mind. You already feel cold and that dreaded call. So you need to drop that those words out of your brain and that's why I'm a starting customer conversation specialist. It's just about starting a conversation and isn't that our form of communication? So your mindset becomes the problem because you build up that this person doesn't know you, They're going to hang up on you. They're not going to be interested. They're going to say they're busy. So you build up all the objections in your mind before you even make the call. So you become the block, not the customer. You create the problem. Mm -hmm. So you need to get out of your own mind and work out how best to serve your customer and get into their mind. Mm -hmm. That's always important as well. Uh, so uh, some of the different things that you do, what, what are some of the aspects of your service that you cover when you help people and uh, advise and consult with them? I teach a process, Chris. So I, I want to give McDonald's as the example because I think that is a fantastic one that everybody will understand. McDonald's restaurants has about 36,000 restaurants 
worldwide in 30 countries. And the average person is 17 years old who's flipping the burgers. Then you've got the manager who's 20 years old. Can you imagine, Chris, handing over your business to a bunch of teenagers? I can't. Okay. I can't. Now, McDonald's has got a workforce completely full of teenagers, and this is a massive organisation. Why? Because it's got a very good process. The process is so simple and so easy to follow that even a reckless 17-year-old kid can do it. Why have I used that as an example? That's to say that everything is about process. And when you've got a good process in place, it makes the task simple. Mm -hmm. So just like making a dreaded cold call, which I don't call it, you need a process in place, like you'd pick up a recipe book to, to bake a cake. You, you follow the recipe, and if you do it correctly, the cake will rise and it will be delicious. Mm -hmm. I teach a process. Hmm. And, and so you work with a lot of these different companies. You help them do what they want to take and achieve and do. Um, what, what, would you, what would you do to help people uh, with their sales teams have more energy and enthusiasm? Okay, so the momentum starts at the top. Mm. So I'm a believer. A lot of companies are continually, continually trying to thrash more volume out of their team. Go team, go team, harder, more, more. But actually, people learn by what they see. And if you're the leader of the team, you should actually have the highest figures. Mm. That is very motivating to a sales team rather than the whipping process. More, more. I do nothing, but I want more from you. Mm. So it's about encouraging, supporting, training. So don't blame the team, train them. Set challenges each week that are achievable and build confidence. Applaud every victory because when you applaud a victory, a success, we've got a new key account, you're laying the foundation for further success. You're building a, a culture that recognises achievement. So when you're recognised, you want more of it. It becomes, you become the, the junkie who really wants to continually have wins because your company recognizes it and applauds it. That's always important. I mean, it, it, everything starts at the top. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, it's the leader that sets the, the tone for everything, the corporation and the motivations and everything that need to take place in it. Um, what, secondly, how does end of the month sales figures leave you feeling sick and depressed where people get, you know, depressed, <laughs> they lose their enthusiasm. Okay. So, Something's happened that by the end of their month, they feel like that. And normally it's because there's a pattern with salespeople. They don't work hard at the beginning of the month because they're exhausted by the end of the month. So they haven't worked, they haven't paced themselves. So on the first of the month, you start on zero. It's a new month. And at, by the end of the month, you want to make sure you've made enough so you get your commission checked. The problem is people wait till about the 20th and it's suddenly, oh, I better get going now. Now, if you've ever wanted to pick up a good deal like on a white good or a car, you go shopping at the end of the month because you'll be able to get the best deal from that salesperson because sure enough, they still haven't made their quota. Mm. And then if it's end of month, they'll, they'll give it to you because they just need to sell something. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's when you go shopping, end of month. That's when you can get the best deal and negotiate. Mm. This is the problem. They wait a lot of salespeople 
they don't pace themselves during the month. Around the 20th, they suddenly realize, oh, it's 10, month, 10 days till the end of the month. I better go. So they're like crammers before the exam. They cram, 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 cram. They get to the 30th of the month. They fall over with exhaustion. Oh, I just made it. And then it takes them two weeks to recover. So nothing's done in the first two weeks. And then it creates the same cycle over and over. Really good salespeople have a plan. They map out their month. Each month is planned out how they're going to do each week, what they're going to achieve each week. They have 15, 20, 30 leads that they're working through that one month, and that's their hit list. And they're just going through it over and over and building it and building it, always putting fresh people into their funnel so it's full it's never empty hmm. yeah it's it, a lot of people do that right we always wait till the last second you know we do the like you say the college cram and i was guilty of that in sales you're like oh god it's the end of the month i've got to meet my quota i've got to meet my thing you know you start calling people and you're like trying to cram your appointments uh, how does what's a good way for people to avoid doing that and 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 be better i guess Okay, so at the end of each month, you need to look at your month ahead. Look at what's like a rock, a hard thing. So things that you can't change. You've got doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, you've got school commitments with the kids, you've got date night, you've got things, hard, solid things, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in between that, where there's those spaces, that's where you put your block of Focus on business development. Now, you should be doing consistently calls every single day. Yeah. Consistency is key. And it's to existing customers, new customers, and the follow-up. Now, where most people fall down is the follow-up, and that's where they lose. They put so much effort in starting the conversation progressing the conversation but then when it comes to actually getting the decision mm -hmm. they don't go back for the decision why <laughs> because they're afraid it's called fear mm -hmm. what happens when you go back to someone and say so have you made a decision you hear the word no yeah and that you can't you can't stomach oh another no oh i can't take it not another one Mm -hmm. But that's the problem because you never went back. You did all that effort in the cycle and the most important part, hey, mate, you want to proceed? They don't ask the question. You don't ask, you don't get. Yeah, if you don't, you you got to close, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say that think of the word close. It's got lose in it. C-L-O-S-E and lose, L-O-S-E. This is my topic of the month. I'm just like, please get this. When you close, you lose. Someone actually senses that you're trying to close them. Mm -hmm. and they don't like it. Yeah. So they push back. You know, you're, I... asking, you're asking for a decision. You're not trying to close someone. People use it like a hammer and a nail. They're hammering. The, you know, they want to get it. It's <laughs> ugly. It's ugly behavior. Hammer away. You know, it's, it's it, you know, they always say always be closing. So you, you always want to be closing to try and, you know, flush out any objections and, and test close and stuff like that. But it, it is interesting to me, like a lot of salespeople will just become like information boosts or like, you know, the client will say, you know, what's, what's, you know, what's, uh, uh what, what, what product you got there? What, what does it do? And they're like, ah, it does this, and this, you know, they're getting the brochures out. And then, and then the, the client's like, okay, well, uh, thanks for the information, Mr. Information Booth. And I'll see you later. And they're like, oh, uh, I don't know why I haven't closed any sales this week, Chris. <laughs> you got to remember also, you're not really selling your product. Mm -hmm. You're selling yourself. Yeah. 
That's and really important. It's all about trust and likability. And unfortunately, life is it is it is a lot about your personality. Mm-hmm. And if someone likes you, they'll be more open to doing business with you. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I learned in sales is people are usually looking around because like I, I, uh, one of my big sales jobs was in the car business. And so people go from lot to lot, you know, they drive around on a Saturday and they're looking at different cars and different lots. And, and it's not that they're necessarily looking for a car or a special deal. They're looking for someone to sell them. They're looking for, uh, you know, like you say, someone they can trust, someone they want to buy from. And that's really what they're looking for. You know, they'll tell you like, well, we're just, we're seeing what the cars are here and the red car, but they're just looking for somebody they feel comfortable giving their money to that they trust. And that's what they're looking for. And so if you really focus on that, like you say, a lot of people don't realize you you sell yourself. And a lot of great salespeople I've ever met are, uh, I don't want to use chameleons in the in the term or sense of a negative sense where they hide who they are, but a lot of them are chameleons in the way that they understand people and they can adapt their personalities to other people's personalities, make them feel um, make them feel trusted and make them feel like they have their best interests at heart and help those people achieve stuff. And they can kind of mold around different people regardless of their age or or sex or, or whatever, and they can gain rapport with those people, gain their trust, and then help them achieve their goals. And that's really what great selling is about. So, Chris, you've just really said something so important, and I'm glad you've raised it. So we mirror what we hear, feel, and see. And the mm-hmm. really best salespeople actually are mirroring the person mm-hmm. in front of them in a very authentic, genuine way. So what we're attracted to most is ourselves. Mm-hmm. We are actually looking for another one of us. Oh. And that's what we're attracted to. So when we meet someone who's so similar to us, who has the same vibe, same energy level, may it be high, may it be low, we we find that attractive. And so everybody's looking for themselves. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's something that we appeals to all of us. And so I always found that I was like, why do all these people drive all over every Saturday? You know, they go to two or three different lots. And then a lot of times I would have people when I meet them, they come on the car lot, they'd be like, Oh, we're going to go to like two or three more lots after this. I'd be like, okay, well, great. Let's, uh, spend some time helping you and find out what your issues are. And then they get to like you. And likability is that big factor. And they, they, like you say, they buy from you. They don't, they don't buy, they don't buy because they're like, well, we really like the product to, you know, he's got right here. We, we, they buy from people that they like. Um, let's see. Uh, what, what sort of other things? Uh, let's talk about sales teams who need a swift kickstart to widen the sales network and get more customers. Oh, what are some advice that you give people on that? I think you need to give uh, leaders need to give short incentives and challenges. So a 90-day, let's run, really work out what drives your team. Ask them, is it a cash bonus? Is it maybe a weekend away? Is it a gym membership? What drives your team? It's no point putting cash up if that, that doesn't excite them. Right? Then do a 90-day challenge. Break it up month by month, what they have to do, and make it sort of like tick. Okay, that month I did it. Now I'm going for the second month. I'm trying to get, I want to be eligible for that incentive. I think people run when they have something to run for. Mm -hmm. And I think... If you build your business by quarters, 90-day quarters, it works really effectively. Yeah, that that 90-day quarters, so that would be uh, every three months, right? Yeah. 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 I think that's a good run. And what runs in the leader walks in the team. So if you want your team to be moving, 
you have to be running and setting the pace that you want them to move. Definitely. Definitely. It makes all the difference in the world. One thing you talk about in your, in your materials and, and thought process is mindset and uh, the mindset of top performing salespeople versus non-performer techniques and stuff like that. Talk, talk to us about what the difference is in the mindset between those two people. Okay. You can have the best product and service knowledge. Uh, you can have great skills as a salesperson. But if you don't have a great attitude, you won't, you won't last a month in sales. It's the attitude that gets you through sales because it is a very tough gig. People don't, don't realise how tough it is because rejection is at top of the list. You feel every day rejected. Mm -hmm. People avoid you, don't reply emails, phone calls, you're ignored. You have to become bulletproof and you have to have a very resilient level of self-confidence. And you have to have a huge self-belief, not only in your product, but the company you represent. Yeah. So if you don't think that the company you represent is any good, you won't be able to sell it. So the selling process happens twice. What help happens is you bought into the product or service that you're selling. You absolutely fell in love with the company. You love it so much, you want to share it with the world. Yeah. If that it selling happens twice. So you have to buy first as the salesperson. You have to be a complete believer. So I, when I train, I always say to someone, if one is maybe and five is must have, where, where does this product, product or service sit with you? Do you have to have it or is it just a maybe? If it's a maybe, you're not going to sell it very well. Definitely. I mean, it really makes a difference on uh, people close, but uh, salespeople mindset. What are some other things on mindset that we need to hear about? So we have a lot of doubts ourselves, and we need to block them out because they sabotage all the good in our life. We also prejudge the customer before we even ask a question. Oh, they're probably busy now. I won't ring now. Oh, they won't be interested. Or someone will give a suggestion, I wouldn't ring him, he's not going to be interested. We actually don't even bother asking them the question. Mm -hmm. we, we answer the question for them. Questions are our answers. And we have to get out there and ask some questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, questions are a great way to find out what... Uh what people want to achieve and also communicates to them, you know, uh, this person has my interest uh, at heart or is trying to find out what, what the best way to serve me is. Um, you know, one of my favorite questions I wrote about my book was the line, uh, what are you trying to accomplish instead of the line? Uh, how can I help you? And uh, what, what are, what are you trying to accomplish is what are you trying to accomplish is so much more uh, of a better question in getting in depth of um, you know, everything else that goes into uh, what they want to do. And it's better than, the, you know, so many people, when you say, how, how can I help you? They've heard that so many times, they just have a natural barrier to it, where they just go, I'm fine, stay away from me, I'll leave me alone. Um, and so, yeah, listening, asking questions, finding out what the, what the customer wants, what they're really trying to achieve at their core. Because, you know, sometimes you'll get, you'll just get this thing where they're like, well, you know, I'm just kind of looking. And you're like, well, you know, <laughs> You know, well, you have to go deeper and find out what they're really after, what the real yes, motivations so are, and then try and target them. You're really clever because, like, I've spent 15 years immersed in dialogue, in words, and it's so important the words we use. So the fact I'm so happy that you you understand the what. So mm. most people would say, without realising it, if you were successful, what would that mean to you? Mm -hmm. Where you said what what uh so if 
or any other word creates doubt. That that you're putting self doubt if if you're successful. So what you're suggesting is, well, maybe you're not going to be successful. You've used the word what, and that's already suggesting that they're going to be successful. So yeah. words, very slight tweaking of words can have a totally different outcome. Mm-hmm to the conversation. So they're negative and positive words. And most people without understanding or realise are continually using negative words. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of it's in their mindset too, right? And how they think and the conversations they're using in their in their head as well, right? So conversation is an energy transfer and your job as a fantastic communicator is to like jumpstart it. When when a car dies, you jumpstart it, right? You want to jumpstart someone to think a certain way. Mm. That's the power of persuasion. It's an energy transfer that you give to that person. So sometimes you can have a three-minute conversation with someone and you feel absolutely charged. You feel so good. And then another time you can have an hour conversation with someone and they drain your blood. Yeah. So it's not a matter of length of conversation, time. It's about, it's about the energy transferred. Yeah, totally, man. Totally. Uh, what are some other aspects you want to uh, talk about that we haven't touched on yet? Well, I really think that you need to understand the process And the starting block of having a really good conversation with someone is research and relevance. Mm -hmm. You need to find out a bit about your prospect before you call them. (laughs) That's why why your call is so cold because you don't know anything about them. So I always say to people, go and do a bit of due diligence. So go on there, Google their name, see what comes up. Look, if they've got a website, go on their company website. Look at what projects they're doing. Have they won any tenders? Are they cha- Have they changed premises? Are they growing? Are they expanding? Are they decreasing premises? Are they hiring staff? When people are hiring, that means that there is expansion going on. Mm-hmm. Go on to their LinkedIn profile. Go on to their news feed. Don't just go on to their profile. Go on to their activity feed and look what they comment on. Look who they follow. Look at their level of engagement. Go on to their Facebook. Get a feel of them, who they are socially. Are they a family-minded person? Are they single? Um, Do you have any common friends? Are you involved in the same charities? Find something that brings them closer to you. Commonality is very attractive. Remember, you're looking for someone very similar to yourself Mm -hmm. who has the same way of thinking because what will happen is when you talk to them, you'll get each other. You won't have to convince because you get get each other. Mm -hmm. That's really important. Uh, and like I said, a lot of great salespeople I've met, they're kind of chameleons where they can, they can, they can kind of almost shape shift into different things. Like I've, uh, and they'll use, like you say, different things of mirroring, like pacing, uh, tonality, pacing, uh, even accents. I've, I've some of my best salespeople, they'll, they'll change accents. They'll change, <laughs> they'll change, they'll, they'll pace, you know, the, the tonalities they're using, I remember walking by one of my great salespeople and, you know, he had people's interest at heart, but I remember walking by him one time on the phone and he goes, he goes, yeah, I'm a, I'm just like you. I'm in my forties uh, and I'm going through uh yeah, yeah, I know what that's like. And, and I was like, look at him going, you're, you're in your thirties. You're not 40. Like, well, come on, dude. <laughs> but you know, he's, he's trying to, get rapport with people and build in what they want and help them achieve their goals. And I think, I think that's what a lot of salespeople need to realize is it's not so much about trying to sell someone something and push them into something, but maybe helping them achieve their goals and what they want to achieve. And that's really where you get paid as a salesperson is working in the service of others and, you know, helping them find their goals and helping them fit it in. 
And, uh, you know, like we talked about at the beginning of the show, one of the problems is, is people sometimes they wait till the end of the month or they've got that bonus. If you sell five of the red things, you get, you know, some sort of steak knives or something, you know, uh, doing a lot of Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross references there. Um, and, and, uh, and really, they need to listen to what the client wants and give the client what they want. And and that's and, and when clients don't buy from you and they wander off, it's because you haven't fulfilled their the basis for them to trust you or to feel like you have their best interests at heart and the best value for them and what they're doing. And and you've you failed in that measure. And a lot of people just don't realize that it's not you're not trying to cram people into a sale. You're trying to help people achieve their goals. There's also another aspect of it, and I'm going to give another business a plug if that's okay, is you actually need to believe in what you pedal. And so, for example, I work, I have another business. I work for a USA-based company called Rodan and Fields. They are skincare. And I've been, I've been building up a massive team with them, and I love the company. But most importantly, I love the skincare products. And I use them twice a day, morning and night. And as a woman who's nearly approaching 60, I feel that these products have absolutely changed my skin. And when I meet people, I'm actually really proud to say my age because I feel that my skin's better now than it was in my 40s. So I have absolutely belief and conviction in the treatments. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, and I've got a very big Aussie team, and I'm just going to put a plug here, and I hope that's okay. Yes, I please. Want, I want to build a USA team because this is a US-based company. So if there's any people out there that are looking for five to ten hours a week work, work from home, wherever you want to work, I don't care if you work on the beach, I'll train you, I'll onboard you, I'll teach you really the art of sales and join my team and supplement your income it can be life-changing i get texts and emails from my consultants every week saying how this business has changed them and i don't know how other u.s companies are but i can tell you Rodan and Fields, which is US based, two Californian dermatologists. Mm -hmm. They are, it's an amazing company to work with. So I'd I'd love you to just drop me an email and set up a time for Zoom. Good. And then you can teach them how to sell too and all that good stuff. Correct. They get a free sales coach for nothing. How's that? Yeah, it's all about the plugs. You know, it's it's uh it, selling is one of those things where if you can learn how to sell well. And, uh, you know, I, I talk about this in my book. I was failing at sales and, and one of my sales managers came to me and said, we're about to fire you and uh, you suck. And uh, he loaned me uh, when he gave me actually ten dollars to go buy. I think it four five dollars or ten dollars. Um, this is back before things were expensive, I guess. Uh, but he gave me uh, five dollars to go buy Zig Ziglar's book, The Secrets of Closing the Sale or something like that it has a longer title now. Um, and so I, I, he's like, you need to go buy this book and you need to read it like overnight because you're you're about to be gone. And <laughs> if you if you want to save your job and your butt, you got to learn to sell and you got to learn to close. And so I got Zig Ziglar's book and that saved my that, that changed the whole arc of my life. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I highly recommend it. But yeah, learning to sell is if you can learn to sell and gain rapport with people and help them serve their what they want to do, you can be successful in so many different things, especially what, even if you work for a corporation or you own your own company, you know, selling is everything. We sell all the time. You, you sell to your uh, spouse, you know, as to why they should maybe be happy or stay with you we, or why you should go on a date with somebody. We sell all the time. We sell our family on like what's going on with our lives. You know, we sit around the dinner table and go, yeah, I went to school and I got good grades, even though you may not have good grades. Um, you know, we're always constantly selling and people don't realize they're always selling. So it, it's and a I really find, important skill. Yeah, and Chris, don't you find it amazing that people go, oh, I don't do sales or I hate sales people. Yeah. That's so salesy. 
Um, but they, they've just spent the last hour trying to convince me to go to a restaurant that they want to go to. And I'm thinking, aren't you trying to sell that restaurant to me? Like exactly what you said, it's part of our daily life. In mm-hmm. some way or in some way you are trying to convince another person of something that you're passionate about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it uh, it definitely makes all the difference in the stuff. Uh, what are the things that we want to talk about that uh, that uh, we want to talk about uh, that uh, you do and you can do for clients and stuff? Okay, so I can offer three things actually. I do one on one training. So let, let's say you want to just spend six hours with me. I would take you through a program where we would go. It's broken up into three segments. Mindset, how to start, progress, and close the conversation. How to deal with ghosting. What do you do when someone will not engage with you? They seem like they were really hot, really keen, and now they've gone into um, witness protection program. (laughs) (laughs) They just will not engage with you. And finally, scripts and dialogues. You need a script. It's not to be read. It's a roadmap. It's to guide you. Mm -hmm. So I offer that one-on-one. I also do group trainings, and I've trained people all around the world on Zoom, and it works really well. Bring your whole team on, your whole sales team, and let's do a day of going through that program. Or alternatively, I'm on a couple of online platforms. So if you go on my website, odealfaludi.com.au, mm-hmm. uh, actually .com for you. I'm currently running a program and any of um, Chris's listeners can get a massive saving of over $200 US. Yes. It's just $79 the program. I'm running a special for your viewers. Mm-hmm. If they jump on my website, odealfaludi.com, download order online program, you can learn my recipe to cold call, to starting better conversations. It's not just about cold calling. It's about more effective conversations with your database, with your warm leads, because your warm leads need to be engaged as much as your cold. Mm -hmm. It is a 90-minute online program. It's once you've downloaded, you've got it forever. You can use it as an onboarding tool and uh, you'll always have it. And for your your guests, Chris, I will throw in a one-hour consultation for free after they've done the program, Mm -hmm. valued at Australian dollars, $220. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, to answer all their questions that came out of doing that online program, all their challenges. I'm also on the Udemy platform. You can you can uh, go to Udemy and then micro courses, but there's no free consult with those. They're cheapest chips for those who are budget conscious but want to learn. So there's many ways you can reach out to me, reach out to me on LinkedIn, connect with me, and I'm here to serve you. The online programs are fantastic if you're a bit time poor. There you go. There you go. Well, this is awesome. People should reach out to you and talk to you about this stuff. Give us your plugs one more time as we go out. Uh, the dot coms you want people to look you up on. So Odeal, O-D-I-L-E, Faludi, F for Fred, A-L-U-D-I, dot com, dot A-U. Jump on my site, buy the online program. While at the moment for a limited time, it's $79 US. It's normally, I think, around $299. And I'll throw in that free consult, which is normally uh, Australian dollars, $220. So that's massive. It comes with a 30-day guarantee if you're not happy, but you are going to love it. There you go. There you go. Well, it's been wonderful to have you on. Thank you for coming and sharing some of the data and and, and uh, people love this stuff and it's it's so much for great education. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for having me. Thank have you. Have a great evening. 
All right. And uh, you too. And for our audience, because she's in Australia, so she's she's in the <laughs> evening time down there. Uh, no, I'm in the morning. I just oh, are you in the morning? Oh, for my great evening. Okay. I'm confused. You know, you guys have those reverse spinning uh, toilets that, that go the other way, and you guys have the seasons all the opposite. I get so confused. I don't know what's. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. But, uh, <laughs> but you know. Uh, but you guys, you guys have that Vegemite too, which is kind of an interesting it's thing. Delicious. Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> I've tried it. I don't know. It's. I think you have to get used to it. It's a. It's a. It's a thing Australians love, though. So that's important. And meat pies. We love our meat pies. I haven't tried a meat pie from Australia. I, oh, I gotta yeah. have that sent to me. You so get I'll it from the that. service station. Oh really? On, on a road on a road trip, you always have a meat pie <laughs> and a cold beer. You got to have cold beer. I don't drink beer, but beer is very big here. There you go. There you go. Thanks to my audience for tuning in. Go to youtube.com for chess Chris Foss. Hit the bell notification button. Go to goodreads.com for chess Chris Foss. See all the different places we are at on all the Facebook groups, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, all those different places. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other, and we'll see you guys next time.